Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I want to talk about 10 different types of sourdough bread that you can make and why you would want to make each of them. I'm hoping that you're able to find something that can easily fit into your regular meal schedule, something that's easy for you to pull together with whatever current life schedule circumstances that you find yourself in and give you inspiration for other kinds that you can make if you wanna expand your skills or just switch it up a bit for your family's preferences. I feel like with sourdough, especially when you're just starting, it can be confusing to know what type of recipe to use. When you first start making bread, or at least when I first started making bread, I threw it on the mixer with the dough hook and the yeast, kneaded it, it does a first rise, divide, shape, second rise, bake. And with sourdough, all of a sudden you hear about stretching and folding and you hear about bulk ferments and refrigerator rises and oven spring and crumb and all of these terms that you thought you didn't need to know with just baking a simple loaf of bread. Once you get familiar with it, it can be really easy and simple, but there are other types of sourdough bread than the Instagram artisan loaf that you see. And that's what I wanna bring your attention to. I find that some of these sourdough bread recipes are better for an everyday bread than the artisan style. Now I go through phases of when I really like to make that, mostly in the winter, whenever I have a little bit more time, I'm inside, I'm you know in the house and I can revisit the bread to do that last fold, do that pre-shape and all of that. But then I have some that I'm just like out and I just wanna throw something together before bed, bake it in the morning and call it a day. And so that's what I'm gonna talk with you about today. Some of them are gonna be a little bit unconventional, like a flatbread recipe and a chocolate bread. So let's dive in. All right, the first one I wanna share is something that I shared on here real recently, and that is the sourdough sandwich bread. This is my favorite everyday bread. Now I say that, a lot of you are like, okay, but I thought this other one was your favorite everyday bread. Well, I guess I switch it up a lot. I like this one because it's really easy. You throw it together the night before. So the night before you want your bread, throw into a stand mixer, a half a cup of butter, two tablespoons of honey or sugar, a tablespoon of salt, a cup of active bubbly starter, two and a half cups of water and eight cups of all purpose flour. Knead it until you have a smooth glossy dough and then allow it to bulk ferment. Essentially this just means let it do its first rise. I like to do this for about eight to 12 hours. You can do it longer for those long fermentation benefits, but be careful not to over ferment your dough. If that happens, your dough will lose shape and structure. Next, divide it, shape it, allow it to rise until double, and then bake in a 375 degree oven for 45 minutes. I'm not gonna hang out on that one too long because I just made that video, but that is a wonderful everyday bread recipe that doesn't require a whole lot of thought. The next one on the list is my personal current favorite and that is sourdough brioche. So to a stand mixer, add a cup of starter, active and bubbly, of course, something that has not fallen back down. So it's risen to its peak volume and it has not yet uh, fallen so that the yeasts are nice and active and ready to rise your bread. Three cups of bread flour, a half a cup of unbleached all purpose, a quarter cup of sugar, four eggs, a teaspoon and a half of salt, a half a cup of milk, and two sticks of room temperature butter. Now in this recipe, you can use all bread flour or all all purpose. I've done both. They work great. The key with this recipe is to knead it a long time. The dough is a very wet dough, especially once you add in that room temperature butter and it can seem like it's never going to come together, but I let it knead for a really long time and eventually it becomes smooth and glossy once those gluten strands really develop. Next, allow it to bulk rise, basically allow it to double in size. This takes about six to eight hours for me. Now, if you are uncomfortable with leaving out milk and eggs, you could experiment with adding water and leaving out the eggs until the next day, but I have not personally tried this. I've actually had a lot of success doing it this way, and so that's what I'm currently sticking to. Next, this is optional, but you can refrigerate the dough so that it's easier to work with. Whatever, it's room temperature, the butter is a bit greasy, and so it's hard to shape. I oftentimes do that because I don't have the time to wait for the extra fridge rise. You can also put it in the refrigerator for another 24 hours for a few more fermentation benefits, and just if you wanna start this dough, maybe like several days before you need it, so you wanna make like French toast or something, you can put it in the fridge. Next, divide it into two equal portions and then divide each of those two into eight so that you have 16 equal size pieces. 
roll them into balls, and then prepare two loaf pans with oil or parchment paper or both, and add eight balls to each of them. Allow it to rise until doubled or overnight, and then do an optional egg wash. This gives it more color, and then bake in a 425 degree oven for 25 minutes. Now, before I go too much further, know that you can get all of these printable recipes over on the Farmhouse on Boom blog so that you can keep them in your collection, refer back to them often. I also have a recipe book that is free. It's over 50 recipes in a book that you could print off, have bound. It is free. You can find that at bit.ly forward slash farmhouse sourdough. Some of these recipes are new and aren't yet in there, but I plan to update that book very soon and that'll go out to my email subscribers as well. So if you get that book now, you will get the updated version later as well. The brioche loaf is best suited for buns, rolls. Also, you can use it to make French toast. It's the most delicious French toast. It can also be used for sandwiches. It's a very light, fluffy bread. So if you're not used to sourdough or your kids aren't used to it, this does have that almost like bunny bread texture. I have a recipe over on the Farmhouse on Boom blog that has uh, French toast. So you can make this brioche and then follow the French toast recipe as well. Perfect for breakfast. All right, the next one on my list is a whole wheat sourdough bread. What's cool about this recipe is you can make it in a cast iron Dutch oven or you can make it in just a regular loaf pan. Either one works and it has the benefits of being 100% whole wheat. To a large bowl, Add one and a half cups of water, a half a cup of melted coconut oil, a half a cup of honey, one cup of bubbly active sourdough starter, and three or four cups of freshly milled whole wheat flour. Mix that up with your hands so that it kind of comes together. Then add a tablespoon of salt and an additional three cups of flour. We are going for six to seven cups of whole grain flour here. Sometimes you can't fit it all in, and so I like to just add it slowly. Combine the dough with your hands for about five minutes to bring the dough together. Add more flour if the dough is too wet and sticky. Cover with a damp towel or plastic wrap and set aside for 20 minutes. This is a process called auto lice or auto lease where the flour becomes fully hydrated. With whole grain flours, it can take a bit longer for the other parts of the grain that are usually stripped away in the process of making an all-purpose flour to absorb all of the water. So sometimes you might think that you need a lot more flour, but really it just needs more time to soak up all of that liquid and fat. And so give it some time to do its auto lease and you might find that your dough will come together beautifully. Instead of kneading with this one, I like to do a stretch and fold method. This is where you take the dough on one side and pull it up about six inches, then fold it over the rest of the dough, turn the bowl about a quarter away around and then repeat the process. Do this for a total of three or four times and then cover it again with plastic wrap or a damp tea towel. Do the first three stretch and folds every 15 minutes and then an additional three stretch and folds every 30 minutes after that. Cover it with plastic wrap and allow the dough to bulk ferment until doubled in a warm place. This usually takes about eight hours depending on how warm it is. Again, the risk of over fermentation is there, but the longer that it ferments without over fermenting, the more you will have it sour. So if you have a gluten intolerance, doing a longer first rise is actually really good to make it more digestible for you, but you don't want it to over ferment. Split the dough in half down the middle with a dough scraper. Be really careful not to break any of those precious bubbles. Do this carefully. Then shape into a ball by gently spinning it towards you against the countertop, giving it tension. Set it out 15 to 20 minutes uncovered. This allows the top to develop a bit of a film, so that way whenever you go to put it in your banneton baskets, it won't stick. Next, turn it over and shape it and then transfer it to a lightly floured banneton basket or bowl with a tea towel and cover with plastic wrap and proof for 12 to 14 hours in a refrigerator. I like to put mine in a grocery bag and tie it. Next, preheat the Dutch oven in a 400 degree oven. Remove the dough from the refrigerator and score it with a sharp knife or razor and bake it for 20 minutes with the lid on and 20 minutes with the lid off. Now you can make this exact recipe, so all the same ingredients in the same way that I made the sandwich bread. So you can put it into your mixer, knead it until it's nice and stretchy, allow it to do its bulk rise in a bowl, divide it, put it into some bread pans, allow it to double in size, and then bake it. You don't have to do it in the cast iron Dutch oven. 
That does help to create that beautiful oven spring, but I often make this as a sandwich loaf. All right, the next one I wanna share is my sourdough flatbread. This is one of our family's favorites. It's of course good with rice and Indian food, but it's also nice for something like tacos. It's not as flat as a tortilla, but it still can be used for things like tacos. To make it, mix one cup of active starter, two cups of unbleached all-purpose flour, a half a cup of milk and a teaspoon of salt together and knead for a few minutes. Cover and allow that to rise for at least two to four hours. You can also let it go overnight for the long fermentation benefits. Next, divide it into eight equal pieces. Roll each out into about a quarter inch thickness on a lightly floured surface and then cook each flatbread in a skillet. I like to use cast iron because it doesn't stick for a few minutes on each side. Next, let's talk about my chocolate sourdough bread. This one is so good. It's a new family favorite. The cocoa powder almost makes it have a bit of a cakey texture, but without being like cake or without it being super sweet. You can put chocolate chips and then spread it with butter and honey, or you can leave the chocolate chips out and even use the chocolate sourdough bread as a sandwich bread. I recently had Ashley Turner from Turner Farm on the podcast, and she talked about how they enjoy using their chocolate sourdough bread for sandwiches, and it's their most favorite bread for sandwiches. So that's where I got that idea. At Turner period farm over on Instagram, beautiful account. But yeah, I love that inspiration for being able to use this chocolate sourdough bread for even something savory. I adapted this recipe from my original no need artisan sourdough bread recipe. And so it has a lot of the same ingredients. In a large bowl, measure out 250 grams of unbleached all purpose flour, 100 grams of freshly ground whole wheat, 125 grams of bread flour, if you don't have that, you can also just use more all-purpose. 10 grams of salt, 50 grams of brown sugar, 50 grams of cocoa powder, and then mix that well. Next, add in 335 grams of water and 100 grams of bubbly active sourdough starter. With your hands, mix the dough until it comes together for about five minutes. You're not really trying to knead it or develop the gluten. You're just trying to bring it all together because this recipe is going to have some stretch and folds in it. Cover it with a damp towel or plastic plastic wrap and allow it to auto lease at room temperature for about 30 minutes. Next, add in 125 grams of chocolate chips. Of course, this is optional. You can also add in raisins or walnuts or pecans, all beautiful additions. After that, it's time to do some stretch and folds, just like with the whole wheat bread and with the no need bread that I'm gonna be sharing with you here shortly. Perform the first three stretch and folds every 15 minutes and then three more every 30 minutes after that. This should make it to where the dough really starts to have some structure to it. You should be able to stretch it. It should be glossy and developed. And then it's time for the bulk rice. So after that, allow the dough to sit at room temperature for three to eight hours. This is varied based on how warm it is. This is where you're going to get a lot of those long fermented benefits as well as the sour taste. Next, do a little pre-shape where you sort of roll it into a ball and allow it to sit at room temperature and develop that skin. This again, keeps it from sticking to the banneton basket. Next, turn it over and shape the dough. Add it to a floured banneton basket with the seam side up. Cover it with plastic wrap or a plastic grocery shopping bag tied up so that you can put it in the refrigerator overnight or until you're ready to bake. I have left bread like this in the refrigerator for several days and that works fine too. Preheat your Dutch oven at 425 degrees for one hour. Dust the top of your bread with some flour to create a beautiful design. Score it with a razor. Bake it for 20 minutes with the lid on and 30 minutes with the lid off and then allow it to cool completely before using. The next one on the list is adapted from my sandwich recipes. So you can either do the whole wheat sandwich loaf or the all-purpose sandwich loaf, and then add in a cinnamon raisin swirl. So this is a sourdough cinnamon raisin bread. The night before you want your bread, add six to seven cups of freshly ground whole wheat or all-purpose flour to the bowl of your stand mixer with the dough hook fitted, a cup of active sourdough starter, a half a cup of melted coconut oil, a half a cup of honey, a tablespoon of salt, and one and a half cups water. Knead it until it is a glossy, stretchy, gluten developed. This takes about 10 to 15 minutes on speed two or three on my sand mixer. Side note, I find that people say, and in, in like the KitchenAid website says, and if you Google this, that you should need way less. But I find that my doughs in my KitchenAid mixer don't come together to this stretchy window pane test passing dough for several minutes in the stand mixer. I actually have never over 
needed it. I know that's a possibility. I have not done that. And so I do like to need mine a little bit longer. Maybe if you have a different mixer, that might not be the case. The next day, divide the dough into two even balls. Add the bread dough to a mixing bowl, or you can even just leave it right in the uh, stainless mixing bowl with your mixer and let it sit at room temperature for about eight hours. What I typically like to do, again, you can go longer, but you don't want it to over ferment. The next day, divide it into two equal sized balls and then roll each ball of dough into a half inch rectangle. You could measure, I just eyeball it. In a separate bowl, mix up two cups of raisins, half a cup of brown sugar and three tablespoons of cinnamon and then spread that out over the dough roll it up and add it to a bread pan. I like to use my stainless bread pans that have been greased with coconut oil and then allow that to sit at room temperature until doubled in size, brush with an egg wash and bake for 35 minutes at 400 degrees. We love using this bread for French toast. It also just makes a really good cinnamon toast spread with butter and honey. Okay, the next one on the list is sourdough challah bread. Now I know I'm saying that wrong, but this dough is delicious. It's a lot like the brioche except for without the dairy. It's golden, it's braided, and it's beautiful. The night before you want this bread, add a cup of sourdough starter, three and a half cups of bread flour, a half cup of unbleached all-purpose flour, six tablespoons of honey, six tablespoons of oil. You can use any neutral tasting oil. I like to use coconut oil because that's what I have on hand. Three eggs, two teaspoons of salt, and a half a cup of water to the mixer and allow it to knead with the dough hook until it's smooth, glossy, and pulls away from the sides of the mixing bowl. This could take about 20 minutes, so I like to just get it going and then walk away. Cover that with plastic wrap or a wet tea towel and allow that to rise until about doubled. This could be eight to 10 hours. In the morning, divide the dough into four equal portions and then make 18 to 20 inch long by three to four inch wide rectangles and then roll each of those into a rope. Place all formed pieces of dough together on the counter and pinch the ends together so that you can create a braid. Starting from the right side, cross the second piece of the dough directly under the piece to the left and then over the dough piece all the way on the left. Then take the portion all the way to the right and put it over the dough piece directly to the left of it, under the piece in the middle, and lastly over the piece all the way on the left. Continue with this pattern until it's completely braided then pinch the ends together and tuck the ends under the loaf. Next, place it into a greased baking dish. So if you shaped the dough on a piece of parchment paper, it's really easy to then just lift it in. You can use a nine by 13 dish. You could also use a larger casserole dish and then allow the dough to rise until doubled. This will take a few hours depending on the temperature. It could take a little bit longer. You can add an optional egg wash and then bake it in a 425 degree oven for 25 minutes. I am saving my most popular sourdough recipe for the very end, probably the one that's the most like what you'd expect with sourdough bread, an artisan loaf with scoring on top with unbleached all purpose and a combination of a few other flours. Before that though, let's share one that's quite a bit healthier for you because it utilizes a whole ancient grain. So this is my einkorn sourdough loaf. For this one, add three and a half cups of unbleached all-purpose einkorn flour and one and a half cups of whole grain einkorn flour, one and a quarter cups of water, one cup of active sourdough starter and a teaspoon of salt to a large mixing bowl. Mix it together with your hands and then let it sit for about 30 minutes. Again, whole grains and especially ancient whole grains like einkorn take a long time to absorb fats and waters. So it really might appear that this dough needs more flour, but in the end it will absorb. Next, flatten out the dough and stretch and fold in the edges on all sides and then roll it into a ball. Place it in a bowl and cover it with plastic wrap or beeswax and allow it to rest again for 20 minutes. Since ancient einkorn does not have the same gluten structure as our modern wheat, it does not stretch in the same way. And so you can't really do those big stretch and folds like you do with modern wheat, which was in all the other recipes. Instead, we're going to be more gentle with the dough, developing the gluten without handling it quite as much. Repeat the flattening and folding process again and allow it to rest for 20 minutes and then do it one more time. Next, shape and cover it with plastic wrap. Allow it to do its bulk rise until doubled in size, which can be anywhere from three to 12 hours, depending on the warmth in your home. 
Next, shape the loaf and place it in a floured banditon basket. Cover it with a plastic bag and place it in the fridge overnight. Preheat a cast iron Dutch oven in a 450 degree oven. Once the Dutch oven is preheated, take the dough out of the refrigerator and place it onto a sheet of parchment paper. Score the top of the dough and gently place the parchment paper and dough into the Dutch oven, cover with the lid and bake it for 30 minutes with the lid on and 15 minutes with the lid off until it's golden brown. It's really cool. Uh, recently, I had Laura Lives the Good Life over on my podcast. If you aren't following along, I have a podcast called Simple Farmhouse Life Podcast. It is here on YouTube. You can just search Simple Farmhouse Life. It's also on you know Apple, Spotify, anywhere that you get your podcasts. It's there and I have a new interview every single week where we talk about all things simple living, whether it's food, home, family, handmade, decor, all of that kind of stuff. And I just recently had on Laura from Laura Lives the Good Life and she taught me some science behind sourdough bread. So I always knew that steam helps your bread to rise in the oven, it's called oven spring but I never really thought about why that is. And she told me that the steam prevents the bread from getting the crust on it. So once there's a crust on it, it no longer can rise because that crust stops it, which makes a lot of sense. And so that is why we preheat the Dutch oven and why we put the lid on. It helps to create that oven spring. Another trick that she told me is she actually puts ice cubes down into the Dutch oven. So there's parchment paper under the bread and then on either side of that parchment paper, she throws an ice cube so that there's even more steam within the Dutch oven, which creates even more oven spring. So I'm really excited to try that trick. I just interviewed her yesterday, haven't made any bread since then, and I'm really excited to try that. Another one I wanna share with you is sourdough French bread. This gives you those nice long loaves that you could use for sub sandwiches, or it's also really great for garlic toast with some pasta. So we like to cut it up, add some butter and garlic and herbs and cheese and bake it alongside pasta. For this one, add a cup of bubbly sourdough starter, one and a quarter cups water, two teaspoons salt, four cups unbleached all purpose flour, a tablespoon of honey and two tablespoons of olive oil to a stand mixer. Knead it until it's stretchy and pulling away from the side of the bowl. Again, it should pass that window pane test, which means if you take a little bit of dough and pull it up from the mixer, you should be able to stretch it so much that you can see through it. Place it in a large oiled bowl and cover with plastic wrap, beeswax wrap, or something that's airtight so that a skin won't develop on it and keep it from rising, and allow it to ferment for eight to 24 hours in a warm place. Again, if it's too warm, 24 could be too long. The next day, it should have at least doubled in size. The next day, divide Divide the dough into two equal parts and shape it. Then roll each one out till it's about a quarter to a half inch in thickness. Roll it up and pinch the seam. Place the French bread dough on a parchment lined baking sheet. Cover it with a damp tea towel. This is my favorite way of covering something that's doing its second rise, especially whenever there's no uh, top of a bread pan like protecting it. So whenever it's in a bread pan, you can put plastic wrap over and it can keep rising. But whenever it's on an open sheet like this, or like bagels are just sitting there on the parchment paper, I'm afraid that the plastic wrap would stick. So I just do the lightest towel I have, like a really lightweight linen, get it wet, wring it out, and then put it on top. That keeps it from getting dry, but it also keeps it from sticking and from you know something too heavy would push it down as well. So allow the two French loaves to rise again until doubled. You can optionally slash it with a razor to create that lovely French bread look and then bake it in a preheated 400 degree oven for about 25 minutes. For a more golden crust, you can add some steam to the oven. So either a pot of water that you've just boiled or some ice cubes on the bottom of the oven or on the tray. So if you're doing it on a sheet tray, just pull the parchment paper that the loaves are sitting on up a little bit and put some ice cubes along the sides. All right, the last one on the list, which that tip will be very handy for, this is my classic, traditional, no need artisan sourdough bread recipe. So this is the one that when you see somebody pull out that beautiful rounded loaf out of a cast iron Dutch oven with a beautiful design on top, this is the kind of bread you're looking for there. I hope that with, throughout this video, I'm covering why you would use each one and what would fit your needs. This one's a bit more involved and a bit more of a learning curve than just you know, kneading something in a mixer, allowing it to rise, shape double again and bake. However, you get really familiar with the process and it's very familiar and rewarding after that. To a large bowl, add 500 grams of unbleached all-purpose flour, 200 grams of freshly ground whole wheat, 
and 250 grams of bread flour. Mix that together with your hand and add 650 grams of water. Allow that to rest for about 30 minutes for the water to hydrate the flour. Next, add in 200 grams of active bubbly starter and dimple that in with a wet hand. Sprinkle on 20 grams of salt and mix the dough for about five minutes to bring the dough together. Cover it with a damp towel or plastic wrap and allow it to rest for about 30 minutes. Next, perform the stretch and fold. So you can do the first three every 15 minutes and then an additional three every 30 minutes. Then cover it with a wet towel or plastic wrap and allow the dough to bulk ferment until double. Usually I do this, depending on when I started the bread, anywhere from five to 12 hours. Hours. Split the dough down the middle with a dough scraper, being really careful not to break any of those precious bubbles and shape the ball by gently spinning it towards you. Allow it to sit for 15 to 20 minutes uncovered. Next, turn it over and shape it. Transfer to a floured banneton or bowl with a tea towel and then cover it with plastic and allow it to proof for 12 to 15 hours in the refrigerator. The next day, preheat a Dutch oven for about an hour at 500 degrees. Remove the dough from the refrigerator immediately before scoring and baking. It's nice at this point to dust the top with a little bit of flour so that your scoring pattern stands out. You don't necessarily have to do this, but it does make for that beautiful scoring pattern. Score it with a razor. At this point, you should, you should have your dough on parchment paper. Gently lift the parchment paper into the preheated cast iron Dutch oven. And then at this point is when you could add some ice cubes if you wanna create a little bit more steam. Bake it for 20 minutes at 500 degrees with the lid on. Then reduce the oven temperature down to 475 degrees and bake it for an additional 25 minutes or until brown. This is a wonderful all-purpose spread. It works great for sandwiches or our favorite way is with our eggs in the morning. A little bit of toast with butter really makes eggs like 12 times better. So we love to have it on hand for that. It is my go-to bread recipe. Um, not one that I make as often as my sandwich loaf or my einkorn loaf, but I love making it. It has a crusty exterior and it's fluffy and it has those holes on the inside as opposed to the sandwich loaves, which are more like you'd expect for you know bread from the store. All right, well, I hope that you got something from this video and learned about several different sourdough breads that you can make as you start experimenting with sourdough in your own home. I love making every single one of them. There's a few more over on my blog, obviously sourdough bagels. I shared about that recently. I don't know if I can count that as bread, but it works as a bready food in your house. And it's actually my favorite one to make. I think I said that with a few, but that truly is my favorite one to make and a go-to for us. Also sourdough tortillas are really great for tacos. I have a sourdough ciabatta bread over on the blog, sourdough hamburger buns, sourdough hot dog buns, all over on farmhouseonboon.com. So this just really scratches the surface and gives you some ideas to get started. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are brand new, hit that subscribe. I make new videos every week and I'd love for you to follow along with that. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.